What's going on everyone and welcome back to another career mode video on Ashes Cricket. It feels like a long time since we've played this. I haven't actually opened this save file since the 13th of the 3rd, so that is absolutely crazy. The uh, New South Wales side, not looking too great. I don't know who that champion guy is up the top, but apart from that, not too bad. Few club cricketers in there. It is going to be a warm one here today in Sydney. Top temperature of 42 degrees, overcast weather with a 22% chance of rain. The pitch is dry, it's hard. So we're going to get some good carry through to the keeper. Nick Maddinson has the coin. He is not going to be calling. Tassie going to be calling. Uh, calling sorry, they have lost the toss, and New South Wales Blues are going to have a bowl first. All right, so the record at the moment is looking pretty good. Just the four matches, the 150, that strike rate is the key thing, though. It is above 130, which is exactly what you want for a guy coming in in this situation. Just nine overs left to go, 250 on the board already, and uh, we are just going to look to try, I was going to say, take a single there, but there is absolutely no timing on that pull, f uh, pull shot sorry, off of the back foot. But 5 for 256 is a fairly decent score at this stage, it must be said. We just need to look to try and capitalise, get ourselves in. You know, we've got maybe uh, you know, two or three overs to just get the pace of the wicket, and then hopefully we can go try and explode and get some quick runs. Oh, this one here has been played away into the gap. We've got a change of bowling now as well, Moises on Riquez. It's not going to matter though, it's gone for four. Benny McDermott just did miss out on his 100, which is a little bit disappointing. But we've still got six overs here left to go. And Faulkner in, he has been impressive in this tournament to date so far. He's been very aggressive. Uh, he's been pretty good in the uh, Sheffield Shield season as well. So he's coming in with good form with the bat. Uh, so with five overs here left to go, I think we're probably going to be looking somewhere around, hopefully, uh, that 330-340 region if we can. Um, but we do need to make sure that we start stocking up on these boundaries if we can. Oh, there we go. We've, uh, I don't even want to say that we've really gotten a hold of that one because we haven't. The timing's just okay. It's gone for four, but that's what we've tried to do basically the first three balls of the over is just go for that big hoik. The spin is on. It's a left-arm Chinaman as well, which you don't see very often in cricket at all. You don't see it towards the back end of the innings either. But um, we're going to try and make the most of it here at the moment. That's a good piece of fielding, and it's actually cut it down to just two. We haven't quite got a hold of that. We haven't really got a hold of anything, to be fair, that's gone to the boundary here today. Uh, but we will still take that four. It's much needed. 11 coming off that Moises over. Six for 307 with three overs left to go. 330 is definitely still on here. Oh, this one here we've got a hold of. Thank you for coming on the legs is a leg spin, and we have smashed that for a 104 metre six. As I said, thank you for coming, old Buckner. Craig Buckner, I think, the club cricketer. We move on to 316 for six. To 23. Oh, what? You have got to be kidding me. 23 off of 14, and then we go absolutely cream that one in to short cover. Moises and Reeks takes a great catch down low, to be fair. Another good cameo from Cliff, though. And that is all that has really been required in this career mode to date so far. We're going for 23 off of 15. The Tassie Tigers now 7 for 316. This, one, this might actually go to the boundary. <laughs> he has absolutely timed the pants off that one. Buckner, who uh, actually did get us out... In the, uh, well, I guess in our innings, I was going to say the first innings, but got us out uh, with that amazing catch from Enriquez. He's actually here opening the batting, and he's not doing a half bad job, to be fair. 26 now off of 45. Once again, we just can't seem to pick up wickets in the one-day format complete, uh, sorry, compared to the first-class format. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, things just don't really jink into place, and we just cannot get them. We've got the last ball here of our second over. None for eight so far. Two for 86 uh, New South Wales. I guess in this situation here, as we've been picked up off our legs for a maximum, we're just going to go and try and be that economical bowler, try and raise that run rate up, because it is already above seven. So if we get some economical ones in here early, it's going to put some good pressure on New South Wales. But with shots like that, it could be easy pickings here for uh, Buckner and Hughes's. 
Oh, whipped away. What a shot. It's dissecting those two men on the leg side. But Wagner picks himself up another four. And wickets just don't seem to be coming here for the Tassie Tigers. He has played that somehow from outside off stump, swinging away, and he has managed to place it to the square, well, sorry, between the square leg and fine leg boundary. So that is an absolute incredible shot by Hughes. Moves on to 79 off of just 83 deliveries. Oh, Buckner, our nemesis down the other end, he's 73 off of 95. So he's doing a decent job for a bloke who's only rated about 60 overall with the bat. Um, he is really holding up an end and uh, doing a job here for this New South Wales side. But the run rate is now starting to climb. I think it's somewhere around uh, the seven... I think it's somewhere around the seven and a half, eight runs per over mark. Um, so we can get some economical overs in here. We do still have five overs left to go. And we can see there is actually above eight, 8.37. And it is going to be Jimmy Faulkner coming in to bowl the next one. Oh, yes! Finally, we've got one. We have hit the top of off. Man, oh man. I am so excited, actually, that we have picked up that wicket, to be fair. Because we have... I don't want to say that we have been struggling. But we just haven't been able to get that penetration or haven't been able to get that breakthrough. We have just gone through the defences, just clipped the off bail, mind you. It was a very, very close thing, it must be said. But um, we have managed to go and get ourselves our first. We saw the record at the start of the game. It's not great. We're averaging about 40-odd uh, the well with the ball in one-day cricket. So we're going to look to try and bring that down as much as we can because, to be fair, 40-odd is not what is going to get you picked for higher honours. It's not going to get you picked in the 2020 leagues around the world. And it sure as hell is not going to get you picked for the Australian team. So we need to try and work on that. And hopefully this here can be an opportunity. Bowling at the death, we can go and get ourselves some wickets later on in the piece. But still, 1 for 29, in the context of the game as well, where it has been very high scoring and very very uh, free-flowing, I should say, we need to keep the runs down, is exactly what we've done. Oh, catch that! Oh, my goodness. Where was the man at Gully? Buckner was gone for all money. Alright, so just with the situation that the game is in, there's about 9 overs left to go. Just under 9 overs left to go. The score is 5 for 223. Uh, so required run rate, I think, is somewhere around the 9 runs per over mark required. 96 off of 52. We've got 2.5 overs, basically, left to go here uh, at the death. So I'm hoping that we can go and pick ourselves up some other wickets, because we did talk about our average uh, earlier on. We've got Neville, we've got Madison. I think once we can get through those two, hopefully we will have uh, a bit of an easier time at grabbing ourselves some of these wickets, because these two are still very solid batsmen, don't get me wrong. But... Um, we need something here. We need to get something going. We need that bit of magic that took Hughes off bail. Um, and we need it here in this latter half of the game. You'd have to say, uh, sorry, Tasmania are in the driver's seat here with that run rate creeping up uh, ever so slightly each time. And that is going to help big time. Great catch there by the square leg fielder, Caleb Jewell. And Maddinson is gone for 18 off of 23. That is the kind of stuff that we need happening for us. We need... We need that, just that luck, I guess, to go our way. Leo Flynn coming in, and for some reason, this New South Wales side is just continuing to produce, uh, like, very solid club-level players. This guy's rated 68 overall with the bat. So he's no bunny by any stretch. But that's a good over. We've picked up the wicket. We've only gone for four. New South Wales now six for 236. Oh, this one here has been worked away. I don't think the field is going to cut that off, to be fair. It's gone straight over Square Leg's head as well. It was a great shot. We'll just have a look here, <coughs> excuse me, on the replay. He basically just bunts it down into the ground. It's a hard, it's a hard chance. It is a hard chance for Square Leg. We'll give him that much. But should have really at least made an effort. But hopefully we can back it up here with our back to back dot balls to finish the over. Would mean that only four would come off it. And as you can see, 80 off of 37. It is slowly slipping away here from this New South Wales side. So, you know, we can't finish with a dot, but we finish with one better 
just the well sorry one worse it wouldn't be one better uh, one worse in the single just the five coming off our ninth table we've got one left to go New South Wales are in all sorts of trouble here Alright, we've got three balls left to go here. I'd really love to finish with another wicket just to get that three for, bring that average down as much as we can. But um, we do have, I was going to say, a very good batsman in Peter Neville. Leo Flynn's doing a decent job as well. Um, so we're going to have to provide something special. Something from the top drawer, you'd have to think, with these last two deliveries. But the game pretty much is done and dusted. Um, New South Wales essentially need, I think it is, over three runs a ball. That's going to help their cause, though, for, for Neville. He moves on to 29 off of just 22 deliveries. But, yes, yeah, 60 off of 19, essentially needing 20 runs per over. Hopefully, I was going to say, we can finish with a dot ball. We're not. That last over has kind of ruined the figures, just a touch. It's kept New South Wales in the game slightly, but I can't imagine that they are going to have enough to get up here and pick themselves up the victory. They have actually fallen 28 runs short. There we are. It has been confirmed that Tassie have won by 28 runs. Uh, champion, uh, fair enough, the player of the match. He did take 2 for 64, which included our wicket. He did also have the top score for the New South Wales side of 93 off of 109. We took 2 for 61, so again, a little bit expensive. That's not going to bring the average down at any great rate. Uh, and then 23 off of 15. We did go to Buckner. Great catch by Moises, it must be said, um, for him to grab the wicket. Uh, and then with the ball, 2 for 61. A little bit expensive, but probably the pick of the bowlers, to be fair. Kingston was good opening up. None for 48. Very economical. And then Fekete taking 2 as well. Faulkner, the other wicket, with 1 for 55 off of his 10 overs. Let's go have a look at the league table. We'll also go have a look at our selection status in just a moment. Alright, so just having a look at the one day cup here. Thanks to that win, uh, we have actually gone and got ourselves up into second place. I think before that we were sitting down in fifth. Have overtaken uh, the New South Wales Blues and the Bush Rangers as well, which is good. The Redbacks up there uh, with a game in hand, but have only lost the one game all season. I think that was... Uh, no, they, they definitely beat us, so I don't know who they uh, actually went and lost to. Next up, we've actually got a uh, State Shield, a Sheffield Shield game, which is quite funny uh, because it does mean that the games are somehow overlapping. We've got a one-day game on the 14th, uh, which means that we're probably going to have to shoot away from... They're both at Bloodston. How does that even work? I don't know. We're not even going to bother too much about it. But just having a look at the selection status here. So we're a fringe member in that Australian T20 clash, which means that we are very, very close. Bangladesh Super League and English County Cup getting attention, and then a fair way off everything else. Still a no chance of making it into the Australian side, which is a real shame, but hopefully we can start to get a few more, uh, a few more results and really, I guess, get that bowling in the limited overs sorted. The average has dropped below 40, but it is 39, uh, which, you know, compared to the uh, the first class average of 12, is pretty appalling. So we're we'll looking to try and work on that. The batting's not too bad, to be fair. Um, good average, good strike rate, a lot of boundaries that have been hit as well. So we're we'll looking to try and keep that up as we progress through into the latter episodes. But anyway, guys, do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up, smash that like button. If you are new, please do subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Kakite Anoa, see you soon.